dos, uno. Let's boogie. So equation of a circle. So this is an interesting topic in kind of grade 10-ish, depending how you're studying, but pretty much all students should do this in grade 10. And an equation of a circle, I'll try to derive it from the length of basically a line segment. Now, if you haven't watched the video on the line segment and you don't know how to calculate the length of a line segment when you have an X and Y axis, so I'm gonna put up a link up above and make sure that you do understand that before you tackle this so that you can comprehend the equation of a circle. So you see a circle right here. It's a dotted circle all the way around. I didn't really label anything here aside from just putting some kind of an axis, but I didn't even label the axis. Now, if you go back to uh, any line segment, so I'm going to put up a line segment here. So let's say that my line segment is going to be from right here, and this is the center of the circle. So let's label it, it's gonna be X, okay, C and YC. So C stands for center, and then the X and the Y is gonna designate our coordinates. So it is basically a point right in the middle. Now, if you take this and pick any point anywhere on the circle, it doesn't really matter where. So I'm gonna just pick another point and I'm going to join, all right? So this can go anywhere right here. So notice it's exactly the same length all the way around as you keep going through. Now that should be obvious to you because it is basically just the radius of that particular circle. Now, what if we wanted to find out here what the length of this line segment is? Now, I don't exactly know anything because I haven't labeled anything. So I don't know what the X and the Y axis, I don't know how big this circle is, uh, at least for now. So I'm going to just arbitrarily say that this point right here on the circle is point X and point Y. And it could be, of course, anywhere along this path. So meaning it could have been here, it could have been there, it could have been here, it could have been here, doesn't matter. So it is some x, y on that particular circle. Now let's forget the circle for a second. So if we kind of remove the circle entirely, I'm going to take this particular circle out. So let's say I'm gonna cut it out. And all we have is this line segment now. You may remember that if you wanted to know what the length of this is, you would simply draw for yourself. So you can divide this out by rise over run. So this would have been basically creating a triangle in here. And this triangle is a right angle triangle where you have, this would have been your rise and this would have been your run right here. And because it's a right angle triangle, we know exactly what the length of that is by using the hypotenuse. That's how we found out the length of a line segment. And for that, so if this is my rise and this is my run, if I know these, I can of course go back to the hypotenuse equation. And let's say this was my A, this is my B right here. So this would have been my C. And for any triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. That's simply using the hypotenuse or Pythagorean theorem. Now, with this information, what is a? So meaning what is the run? What is the rise? Well, I know what they are exactly. So notice that basically the run is just simply the x value of the point. So that is this particular point x, okay? And then the center of that circle, which I originally had. So that distance is basically nothing else but simply x minus xc. And that's what we would do if we wanted to find out what that line segment is. So this is x minus xc squared plus now B is just simply the rise. Now what is the rise? Well, the rise is nothing else but your Y minus YC. So if we put that in here, there's gonna be Y minus YC squared, and this is equal to C squared. 
Now that c squared, the c itself, if I took the square root of this thing, I would know exactly what the length of that particular line segment is. But that's just nothing else but the original radius of the circle, right? So if I remove this, I'm gonna just call this radius. Instead of using c, I'll just put radius r. And I'm going to remove that from here and I'll put the radius r right there. And notice that if I bring this circle back, so if I bring that original circle back, let me paste it back in here and kind of center it how it was, here is my circle. Well, the equation of this particular circle is nothing else but simply the length of that line segment that you have all the way around the circle. And this is for all x and then all y that satisfy the actual radius. Now the radius squared that we have in here has to be equal to x minus xc squared and then y minus yc squared. And this turns out to be the actual equation of a circle on the Cartesian plane or on an xy axis, where xc is simply your center of the circle and then your r is nothing else but your radius. So this is interesting. We have our xc and yc and then our radius r. If we know these, then we can create you know, a circle in this particular way. Now we can be very specific in the circles that we want to be able to create. So for instance, if I take the same circle and now I start adding this up and I say, well, imagine that my center was equal to just simply zero, zero. Now my radius here, I can actually count it, right? So if I labeled this, let's say this was one, two, three, four, that's my radius all the way around. If I know what my center is, which is zero, zero, and I know that my radius, so in this case it is four, I can very easily create the whole equation of this particular circle that is centered at zero and has a radius of four. And in order to do that, I can take my equation of the circle, which is x minus xc squared plus y minus yc squared is equal to r squared. And because the center is zero, then this is just going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to my radius squared. And that should make sense to you because x squared plus y squared is simply okay, the length of the line segment, which in this case is just simply the radius, right? Now, very often it's very nice to be able to see this kind of in a visual form. So what I like to do is, you know, we can plot these things up. We can use decimals as our tool and we can have, so let's imagine, so this is x squared plus, I'm going to put all of these in here, plus y squared is equal to, and now this was four squared. And here is our circle, which is exactly what we have drawn. And if the radius changes in any way, and we're still centered around zero, so let's say if I change the radius now and make it one, notice the circle makes it smaller. If I make the radius five, it's gonna make it bigger. And I can play around with this as much as I like and make it bigger and smaller and so on, okay? And see what happens to the actual circle. Now this circle is centered around zero. Now what happens if we move the circle out of the way so that the center is not equal to zero? So here I shifted the center over. Now my center is at one zero, so I moved it one to the right. What does that mean for the actual equation of this particular circle? Well, so this is x minus the center of the x value, which is one squared plus my y, now, y in this case is y minus zero because of the center being zero for the y point. So this would have been just squared. And this equals to the actual radius is still four. Now, we're not always given the radius four. Maybe you're just going to be given the two points, which is the center and maybe a point on the circle. And then you have to create the equation of the circle. Don't forget, in that case, 
is that what you have to do is you have to find how big the radius is. And once you have the radius and you have the center of the circle, you can create any equation of a circle that you like. Let me show you this through decimals. So if I had this and we had, this was four, and this is centered in here. Let me put in another point. So this is X squared. This is going to be plus Y squared. And it is equal to four squared. So obviously this is the same circle. But now if I go back here and I shift this over just by one, notice that's exactly what we see. So the green is now shifted over okay, to the right. And you can do that. You can shift as much as you like. Maybe I want it to shift two. Maybe I want it to shift three. And notice the circle just is shifting because its center is shifting. The radius hasn't changed. Now, of course, you can start doing the same thing and start shifting your y, right? The center doesn't have to be along the x-axis. It could be anywhere that you like. And that's what our original equation actually states. Our center is irrelevant. So whatever that center actually is, right here, we just put it within our equation of the circle. So the XC and YC just represents whatever that center is. And it could be in any quadrant, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, doesn't matter, centered at zero, wherever it might lie. And here is an example of this, where we can shift this over, for instance, where the center now is negative three, negative two. The radius can change as well. Obviously, it doesn't have to be 4. It can be 1. It can be 5. It can be 1.2. It can be 5 over 4. We don't know what the radius is, but you can always find the radius if you just simply know a point on the actual circle and you know the center. Once you know those two points, you can find the length of the line. Once you know that length of the line, that is your radius. So now you have your radius, you have your center, and you know exactly how an equation of a circle should look like. In this case, what we would have is, we would have our equation is x minus, now notice it is negative three, this will be squared, plus my y, now my y is has also been changed, this is gonna be minus negative two squared, and then we need to know what our radius is. Now in this case, the radius hasn't changed. If we had to find the radius, we could, in this case, it, it is still four. And here is my full equation of the circle. So this would be plus y plus two squared is equal to four squared. And that's my equation of the circle. And again, I encourage you to go on Desmos and start plotting these things out. So here is my x, so this was plus three squared, plus my y, now my y was plus 2 squared, and then you will see that this circle is going to be shifted into our quadrant. There we have it. So now our purple circle that we had is the one that represents the same circle with the same radius, but now shifted where the center has gone down. And again, you can change your radius. You can make the radius smaller. You can make the radius bigger. You can make it very big, and that's your equation of a circle. So it's pretty neat. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.